Have you ever sprinkled a little pink Himalayan salt on your food and wondered, wait a second, why is this stuff pink? After all, most of the salt we see is plain white, the kind you keep in a shaker on the dinner table. But Himalayan salt stands out immediately because of its rosy hue. It looks unique, it feels a little exotic, and it's often marketed as healthier or more natural than ordinary table salt. But is that really true? And more importantly, what actually makes this salt pink in the first place? Today we're diving deep into the world of why is Himalayan salt pink? Its origins, its history, what gives it that beautiful blush? And whether it truly deserves its reputation as the queen of salts? Let's get into it right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with a simple foundation. What is salt, really? At its core, salt is just sodium chloride. Two elements, sodium and chlorine, bonded together. It's one of the most essential minerals for life, both in humans and in countless other organisms. Our bodies need it to regulate fluids, send nerve signals, and contract muscles. Now, when you look at ordinary table salt, it's typically white because it's highly refined. The processing strips away other minerals, leaving behind almost pure sodium chloride. But not all salt looks the same, because not all salt comes from the same place or undergoes the same processing. That's where Himalayan salt comes in. Despite the name, Himalayan salt doesn't actually come from the snowy peaks of Mount Everest, it's mined primarily from the Kaira Salt Mine in Pakistan, about 300 kilometers from the actual Himalayan mountains. This mine is massive, one of the largest and oldest salt mines in the world, producing around 400,000 tons of salt every year. The salt deposits there formed hundreds of millions of years ago. Back then, the area was covered by ancient seas. Over time, the water evaporated, leaving behind huge beds of salt. When tectonic activity pushed up the land to form the Himalayan mountain range, these salt deposits were buried and preserved deep underground. That means when we use Himalayan salt today, we're actually tasting the remains of an ancient ocean. That's pretty incredible when you think about it. So, why is it pink? The pink or reddish tint of Himalayan salt comes from trace minerals trapped in the salt crystals. The key player here is iron oxide, basically rust. Tiny amounts of iron within the salt have oxidized over time, giving it those warm shades of pink, orange, or even deep red in some chunks. But iron oxide isn't the only mineral present. Himalayan salt contains over 80 different trace minerals, including calcium, potassium, and magnesium. While these are present in very small amounts, they contribute to the subtle differences in taste and color compared to a regular white table salt. Still, iron is the big reason behind that unmistakable pink glow. If you've ever tried Himalayan salt, you might have noticed that it doesn't taste dramatically different from regular salt. That's because, at the end of the day, it's still mostly sodium chloride, about 98 to 99 percent. The trace minerals add a very mild complexity, sometimes described as earthy or mineral-like, but it's usually subtle. Most people wouldn't notice a huge difference in flavor in everyday cooking, so the pink color might make it stand out in your salt shaker, but it doesn't radically transform the taste of your food. This is where things get interesting and a little controversial. Himalayan salt is often marketed as a healthier alternative to regular salt. The claim usually goes something like this. Because it has trace minerals, it's more natural and provides additional health benefits. 
Now, it's true that Himalayan salt does contain minerals like calcium, potassium, and magnesium. But here's the catch. The amounts are extremely tiny. You'd have to consume a dangerous amount of salt just to get any meaningful nutritional boost from those minerals. And of course, too much salt, whether white or pink, can raise blood pressure and increase the risk of heart disease. So while the minerals do make it prettier, they don't make it significantly healthier. Most scientists and nutritionists agree. Himalayan salt is fine to use, but it's not some miracle superfood. It's salt with a bit of flair. Speaking of salt lamps, let's talk about those glowing pink-orange blocks you see in yoga studios or wellness shops. These lamps are carved from chunks of Himalayan salt with a bulb inside, giving off a warm, soothing glow. Some people believe they release negative ions that purify the air, reduce stress, or improve sleep. But scientifically, the evidence is very limited. A salt lamp can make your room look cozy, sure. It might even have a placebo effect that helps you relax. But in terms of measurable health benefits, the jury is still out. Still, they've become a big part of Himalayan salt's global popularity. Back in the kitchen, Himalayan salt has found a place not just as a seasoning, but also as a cooking tool. Have you seen Himalayan salt blocks? They're big slabs of pink salt that can be heated on the stove or chilled in the freezer. You can cook meat, seafood, or vegetables directly on them, or use them to serve cold dishes like sushi or fruit. The appeal is partly aesthetic. It looks impressive on the table, but also functional. Cooking on a salt block adds a subtle seasoning to the food, while the block itself retains and distributes heat or cold really well. It's one of those cases where the beauty of the salt goes hand in hand with practical use. So after all this, the big question is, should you swap out your regular salt for Himalayan salt? The answer depends on what you value. If you like the aesthetic, enjoy the mild flavor differences, or simply want a conversation starter in your kitchen, then yes, it's a great choice. It can make food presentation more appealing and add a sense of fun to cooking. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.